What is going on? I'm gonna make an off the cuff. Five things you need to know when owning a utility trailer or five things you need to do when owning a utility trailer. Any way you wanna do it, any way you wanna slice it, let's go. All right, first things first, we'll start at the front. Make sure the coupling's on when you're hooking it up. We've all done it, I've done it on this truck. Load something on it and it comes up. Make sure that is secured. That is not number one, I'm just starting with that. The chains, make sure the chains aren't dragging the ground and make sure they're securely crossed. Cro look, the right chain goes to the uh, left and lift right. You see what I'm saying? Whichever way we're looking here. So the left chain driver side would go to the passenger side, and vice versa. That is almost, I think the law too in most states. So cross them chains, all right? If you have to have a trailer with this kind of hitch, it sucks. I'm just gonna be honest. Buy a foot. I don't know where my foot's at, it's over there. You can also get one on a wheel. You can also get ones that goes on the side and folds up. It depends on your application and what you're doing. This one has brakes, but only on the rear. It's a <clears throat> tandem axle. That means it has two axles. So I'd say one in the five things that you need to make sure you have and or do is a spare tire. How many people have you seen broke down with a flat on the trailer? <laughs> All the time because they don't have what? Go ahead. What, what don't they have? What, what? A spare. You see that? All right, your other options to have, not having a spare is an impact gun. Harbor Freight sells in what's called an emergency impact gun. It's 12 volt, plugs into your cigarette lighter, and it's slow, but it'll take these wheels off if somebody didn't take some big old impact and just wring them off. It'll take them right off, even your car tires. So you buy that and you keep that in there, and then you keep a tire plug kit. That's another one of the rules. I'm breaking this five top things you need because there's so many and I'm just gonna name it that. We'll name it 10 even, I don't care. Spare tire, cross your chains, make sure you got the right ball. We'll get to that in just a second. Cross them chains, don't open a tailgate if you can't too. <laughs> a lot of people mess their tailgates up on the jack. All right, spare tire, spare tire, spare tire, spare tire. Now let me tell you one of the most cost saving things that nobody ever tells you to do or I've ever seen done except me. I rotate my trailer tires. <laughs> I rotate them because what happens is when you turn, this thing is not made to turn two axles together. It ain't like your car or something to where one axle's turning and one ain't, or they're turning at the same time even, would be nice. So one of these tires, depending on the angle that you have hooked up to your truck is gonna drag, drag. If you have too much weight on the front, back, whatever, it'll rub the side of the tires because the, the transaxle's like this. I mean, the, uh, the axle is made like, like on a, like when you, you build a porch, you crown it to make sure it's up that way it takes weight. Well, the axles in here is made like this. That way when you weight it, it bends it down. And then if you do overboard, it does that so the inside of the tires will wear. Make sure you don't over inflate these tires or they'll wear wrong. Make sure they're not dry rotted. Keep it up off the ground if you can afford it. If you don't use a trailer much, keep them up off the ground. Park them on blocks. Buy little tire covers or keep them uh, tire foamed and sealed and armor all. Just protect them. Spare too, don't forget that. Because what's gonna happen, most people that own utility trailers, let them sit and in the day they need them, bam, tires out, lights ain't working because they're not taking care of them. All right, not only did I just teach you something I've never seen nobody do, I rotate the tires. As you can see, the front wears faster. So I rotated them. Nobody does that on a tandem. Also, if you're in the market for a trailer, if you can afford a tandem axle and have the room for it, buy it because what happens is when you do need to use it say this tire bursts or this one guess what you're gonna still go down the road just fine because the other one will hold it up until you get a chance to change it that is like the best thing ever trust me been there done that i fixed that flat over there just the other day and i made a video of it all right you see this right here this is a little cap it comes off why does it come off you say because there's a grease zert in there. 
So you stick that on the zerk and you pump it. You don't over and fill it. I, I use the high speed bearing grease like, uh, I forgot the name of it. It's for like spindles and stuff. You don't have to use one that high grade because it don't get as hot, that grease. So if you overfill this with cheap grease, it's gonna overheat the bearing in there. So just get it to where you can see the grease and put the cap back on. That's another rule, make sure you keep these caps. You can buy these little caps everywhere. All right, wiring. When you park these trailers, chances are something's gonna fail because of a mouse eat the wire. You nick something while you're pulling it and didn't notice it. The number one thing I've noticed is this that happens to a utility trailer when you're pulling it. It's obnoxious, I'm changing them again, is this. Yes, that was not hit. As you can see, no damage. A rock from, you know, you're pulling it, bam. This one right here has been broke, I don't know how many times. I have replaced that. My other utility trailers are made different, thank goodness. You could actually take that off and change it and put one of the round ones and set it inside there and the chances of it getting broke is almost none, right? So go around your trailer, make sure your plug works. If you're gonna have two types of trailers, there's gonna be some with uh, brakes, some without. This wire right here for the people that don't know nothing is for brakes. You see this different wires? Hmm? See these six? All right, then there's a four, four way. It's like a little flat plug you've seen. Well, that one means there's no brakes on the trailer. This one means they're supposed to. <laughs> that don't mean they work, but they're brake shoes. And then you need a brake boot uh, control box inside your vehicle. A lot of the new trucks come with them. A lot of them don't, SUVs. Make sure you have brake controller if you got brakes. I have seen people that runs lawn care companies with no brakes on their trailer because they don't have the inner truck. And that is the most idiotic thing I've ever seen. Because they'll have this one guy in particular half four mowers on this big 18 foot trailer with no brakes. They're always changing brake pads, wonder why? Because that's another thing, don't put more on these trailers than they're designed. Just because that's a 3,500 pound axle, 3,500 pound axle does not mean you can tow 7,000 pounds. You're gonna say, oh, oh, why not? Because the weight of the trailer, dum-dum. I'm not talking about y'all, me, anybody. <laughs> I'm just joking, joking, not calling nobody. But anyway, because of the weight of the trailer, anything you put on there, spare tire, that all this will take, take away from the weight. So know that. All right, and here's one of the m most important rules about trailering. 60-40, I'm gonna say this again. 60-40, 60-40, 60-40. If you say it three times real fast or any time every now and then, you'll always remember 60-40. And you're gonna say, what does that mean? Well, I'm gonna tell you if you don't know. Just depends on who's watching this video. If you know, you don't. Let me back up. 60 pounds of uh, the weight of the total thing you're pulling, say you're pulling a tractor, 60% of the weight should be in front of the axles and 40% should be at the back because you don't want trailer sway. If you put weight, never put a bunch of weight in the back with light stuff in the front. I see people put push mowers and toolbox up here. Then I have a zero turn back here and you'll see there, it will wreck you. It will push the back of your truck. It will pick the back of your truck up. That is a lot of leverage back there. And a lot of people use single axles, so they put it so it's even worse. So it's lifting the rear end of the truck up. And then you're easy to sway if you hit a bump or something, you're wrecked. 60, 40. All right, let's talk about another thing nobody does on our utility trailers. They don't know how to use ratchet straps. Learn how to use a ratchet strap before you tow anything. Don't go to Lowe's and buy a trailer and just start roping it. Watch YouTube. You see this? This is called E-Track. This is what I recommend you installing or paying somebody to install. Or it's so easy, don't pay nobody. And then it's got that kind of, this is what I use to keep my mowers from bouncing. I know people use boards. I think it's crazy. All right here, watch this. See how easy? This is what it looks like. That's the E-Track. It snaps in. You pull it tight on each side and pull it tight. That's it. 
so there's no work involved. So you can put them everywhere. You can put them up here on the rails. You can put them in your uh, open box tray. Well, I've been doing this for years before I've seen anybody using that crap. So learn how to load 60, 40. Keep your weight. You don't want, your truck has a tongue weight. I don't know if this one has it on the truck. Let's see. Sometimes it'll be written, sometimes it won't. Mine is not. It's probably up under here and I'm not laying up under here and looking. But your owner's manual will have a tongue weight. All right, this has got what's called a receiver hitch. You see that thing right there? That coming with this truck factory. All right, you can also do what's called bumper toe. You take this little cap out and you put the ball right here. I don't recommend that. That's the, it's too close to the truck. You'll jackknife and tear your bumper up. It don't, it don't ride level because what happens is, you see how that hitch is down there? It's dropped in low because I keep my trailer as level as I can. You know why? Not only is it for safety, it's for tire wear. Cause like I told you a minute ago, you don't want the trailer riding low in the front or high in the front. It needs to get as level as you can get it. My new truck has the best hitch. You adjust it up and down to get the most level ride and the safest ride. But what it is, like I said, you don't want too much weight on this or too little weight. You get too much weight on this thing, it can wreck you. You get too little and you can put it all the way in the back of the trailer and it's lifting the whole rear end of the truck off the ground, you're in trouble. Now this is a three quarter ton truck, so this can take more ton weight and it can take more weight in the back because the frame and everything's truck weighs 9,000, almost 10,000 pound truck, not including the toolbox and those tools. And you know, I got about 10,000 pounds and this one's six because it says it on the title thing. So yeah, a lot of people have a standard full size truck or a mid size that's even weighs less. So this rear end right here can get lifted easy. Here's an example of another hitch that I use on this work truck. There is a three-way hitch. That's one seven eighths ball, two and five sixteenths, and two inch on the top. That way I just twist it. Now this thing right here, you see this? This keeps the receiver hitch from, look, moving up and down. I love these things. Not only will it do that, you ain't gonna steal this hitch now. <laughs> you will ruin the hitch trying to cut this off with a grinder or something. So it's for, keep you for, now watch what happens if you don't have that. I bought one for this one, but I changed it so much. Watch this. This is what they do. And the more years you pull, it'll wear it out, which is not really wearing, but that's what they do. Uh, so you hit the brakes, you'll hear click, click, gas, brake, black, black. And right here's where you plug it in. This does have trailer brakes. Chevrolet, you have to have an adapter if you just got a four way single axles, don't have brakes. You can put brakes on a single axle. I have the videos showing it. I gotta upload them. This is the tire that I showed on a video the other day. I, I just plugged it. So keep a plug kit with you at all times. Leave it hooked up to the trailer. Set your jack on a beam. Any of these beams under here is safe. Not on these shackles and stuff. Don't put jacks on this. See this? avoid that put it on the base the frame of the trailer if you leave it on the truck when you lift it you can lift this whole side up safely and then just that way you don't have to scotch nothing it won't move nowhere it could fall back down on you so use jack stands oh so i'm trying to get all this stuff out as fast as i can this is a lot of information rewind it i have been pulling trailers longer than most people i know has been alive and then my dad taught me and I was pulling trailers. Back in the day, we got away with this. When I was 11 year old and earlier, I had to learn how to back it up and everything. <laughs> we had to do that stuff. Dad had us taught to do all that. So I've been pulling trailers for a long time. I'm not telling, I'm just, this is just what you need to have a spare tire, tire plug kit. Uh, I know what you're gonna say. You no, know, everybody's like, I ain't carrying all that in my vehicle. Well, oh well, don't come crying to me. If you can't fix your tire on and you're on the side of the interstate waiting for somebody to rescue you, well, guess who I don't need rescued? Because I got air compressors in my trucks. If you got a DeWalt, 
pick you up a air compressor. There's also ones you could plug in from Harbor Freight, cheap, and plug into your uh, 12 volt plug, and it'll pump your tire back up after you put a plug in it. Plugging's easy. Where's that thing at? So you can get this right here if you're a DeWalt, if you invest in DeWalt. I have these. They'll inflate an air mattress. They run off 12 volt or your battery, both. So carry that with you. Tire kit. I like LEDs. I think they're the best for the trailers. That's an LED. I changed it. Keep your wiring when you plug it up. Make sure all your lights work. I'm tired of seeing people going down the road without no lights on their trailers. It's not safe for you. I also recommend a very bright top light. Like if you're an open trailer, make sure your top light on your truck's working so they can see it. All right, that's more than five things. Rotate your tire, keep a spare, cross your chains. Don't put too much weight on the tongue. This is what's a tongue, if you ever wondered. I know lawn guys that watch my channel know this, but in case somebody don't know, that's a tongue, tongue. Bumper weight's over here. Even though it ain't on the bumper, it's still, that's what that means. How much weight you can push down on the back of this truck. This one is a 2,500 three quarter ton. It's got overload another set of springs and everything so it can haul a lot more if you got a little half ton truck like this be careful because it will wreck you it makes it so dangerous too much tongue weight will make that truck push me around if i put it all on the back then you start swaying everywhere so make sure let's hear the secret rule again 60 40 or two. <laughs> 60, 40, 60, 40, 60, 40. This might save your life one day. Too many people I've seen and cross them chains. It's the law. I'm pretty sure. I, I'm almost certain. I've every state that I've lived in. Now that is the brake. You see, I'm rewiring this trailer. That's why it's in here. That is a, a battery. You see this thing right here? If you ever see anything like that, that is a battery. And you're going to say, what's that for? That controls the brakes. So when you hit the brakes and you got a brake controller in your truck, either it came with it or you mount it. When you touch your brakes, these things are called electric brakes. You can have something called hydraulic over electric. And what happens is when you touch the brake, uh, the trailer is still trying to go the same speed, right? So it'll push the tongue in and the hydraulic will kick and then hydraulic over electric brake. I don't like it. I like it being in control. So when you hit the brake in your car, this little, it goes to this signal, to this battery in this battery. You can hear it hum. It goes, mm, if you're sitting still and you put the brakes on, that electric, it's a brake shoe and drum, just like the old days of cars. So it's got a drum and brake shoes in there. I could show you how to jack it up and show you how tight they should be and with a spoon tool. I'm not doing that. I just want to help the newbies new people this video went absolutely out of control if i'm forgetting something which i'm sure i am write in the comments i think i pretty much went over remember safety 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 60 40 peace and chicken grease